Cardinals, we're going to be jumping into game two in just a moment. Team Spirit are currently up one over TNC, who are currently at nil. And panel, got to say, honest opinions, do you think TNC can win this next game? Ladies first. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Daniel, what do you think, right? Oh, wow. Just throw back to me. <laughs> right. All right. I'm going to ask the crowd. Crowd, do you think TNC is going to take the next game? The crowd has TNC's back, but the question is, do you have TNC's back? The Phoenix Army is strong. Hopefully that sort of crowd power can channel through them because it wasn't even like a 60-minute like a banger or something like that. Spirit just kind of mowed them down. So I, again, I thought that it mainly went down to the shot calling. I thought that whoever was deciding like, okay, we need to group up as five. We need to start taking fights now that cooldowns have been spent on the enemy team. That kind of communication wasn't happening for whatever reason. So, again, that's going to be my go-to symptom. Yeah, they had a quite quite long break. I guess they just needed to focus on game number two. Forget what happened in in game number one. That's pretty much it. We saw the, team the winner spirit. mentality. Very very true. We saw team spirit on the catch. They were just like, okay, guys, we got this. We won game one. We can Zen. totally take game two. Just but relax. They were so relaxed. And uh, for people at home that might not know, I believe the draft is ready. We're going to be jumping into that in a moment. I actually wonder what TNC were doing on their couch. Did they just sit down? Were they having a discussion? Did they sort of talk about what they were lacking? Maybe trying to decide, you know, okay, guys, we just got to get our stuff together. We need to win this next game. I don't think you were sitting on a couch casually just chilling if you lost game one. <laughs> I probably agree with that as well. Draft is ready, by the way, so let's take a look and see what is going to be picked and what is banned, because we start off with a CK ban by TNC. Yeah, Spirit has a lot of uh, exotic strategies, I guess you could call them. Uh, I From a land up... far away. Exactly. The CIS region. It's mysterious what they do over there. I mean, this guy's supposed to be our translator. Perhaps he can make heads or tails <laughs> of it. But CK is not necessarily like, too off the wall, but I had mentioned they occasionally run Drow Ranger strats. And with their tiny pick, they also have the option of giving it to Phobos or ILTW. They not only have you know, variety within their hero picks, but even the roles that they give to these heroes. Why do I see two bands and, and a pick? I think uh, it might just be misaligned. Maybe they have the ban number down there instead of the pick. Or the Spirit are disrespecting TNC and they <laughs> so did just ban just their hero. You, do bands? you do not go there, okay? You do not go there. <laughs> I'm pretty sure they're not like that. We, know, we all know Team Spirit. They're a very respectable team. Of course. So we actually start off with a Tiny pick for TNC. Now, Tiny, very versatile hero. Can we play literally from roles one to four? What has been the most popular utilization of Tiny thus far? Yeah, I, I mentioned that Spirit run it as a one position or a three position, but it's really dependent on what the rest of your picks are going to be. Um, more often than not, you want to make sure that Tiny has as little attention from your team as possible. So like, if you can just stick him in a solo lane, let him tree down the solo offlaner, then that's the best situation for a Tiny. But if you need to dedicate more attention, then sometimes you'll send him mid. Uh, it's great for dual mid purposes, tossing into towers and stuff like that. But it all, it's all stylistically dependent on how the team wants to play it based off their other picks. Well, Tiny is uh, not a hero that you just want to throw throw him on the offlane and say good luck, mate. Uh, he needs help if you have a position four hero who can help him in the early stages, then Tiny just shines. He gets the blink dagger, level, let's say, minute 12, 13. He can just uh, snowball from there. Uh, they have a puck, so pretty much TNC everything is open for TNC right now. Puck can be played as a, as a mid, as an offlane, so they can switch things around. Uh, for Team Spirit, they have Shadow Demon as an opener. Um, one of my favorite heroes. One of it's FNG's one. favorite heroes also. <laughs> also, yeah. So uh, kind of underused heroes. So they might go for more illusion strat. They love to run the uh, terror blade with it. Uh, I'm not sure it's going to survive the second uh, band stage. Also good, good roaming duo. So you can pretty much win all your lanes. Uh, they, just need a, they just need a strong, uh, strong safe lander so they can rotate with these two. They might even run the Mirana mid. We saw them run Mirana last game. Demon Mirana Shadow Demon is a combination. Venomancer. If you run her mid, she can do a lot of work with that Shadow Demon setup. Venomancer being picked up by Team Spirit, though. Thoughts on this? They usually give it to Phobos, and he usually just maxes out Plague Wards after he gets like a value point and Venomous Gale and the Poison Sting for the laning phase. The thing is that typically as a pusher, they 
kind of just leave Phobos to his own devices. Uh, it's definitely a hero that does not need that much help. We'll see how often the Venom needs to alternate into the jungle and whatnot, but it's nothing that TNC have proven to punish yet with their heroes. Though I'm just surprised that TNC actually go for like a different opening than what they traditionally do. I mean, it's possible that it's a puck support, but chances are it's probably going to mid. Puck and support? Or it, it's tiny. a thing. It's doable. Uh, it's not a popular thing, but it is a thing. I can understand why it's not a popular yeah. thing, though. <laughs> it's, a, it's a North American specialty. You talk oh, complexity. That's, so it's from the... Even a further okay. away land. The even further away land, OK. That's right. <laughs> Interesting. Bounty moves locked in by TNC, so they're going to be having early game vision, early game poke for the lanes as well. Um, this kind of indicates that, yeah, definitely not going to be a support tiny. You don't want to be running support tiny and bounty together. Yeah. Oh. Ten seconds. What TNC can do, they can still go for a Tinker. They have the last pick, so they can ban out uh, Nyx Assassin. I mean, track with uh, Tinker is just uh, so OP. Or what they can do, maybe is sneak in uh, Lifestealer against, uh, against Venomancer in the laning stage. It's so good, especially with the changes that you can use the range, Rage after Venomous Gale as well. Yeah, and occasionally TNC like to combine their Bounty Hunter with Disruptor. Uh, almost as irritating as the Tinker combination, but yeah, it's uh, a lot of burst potential, depending on who they find. So I'm, I'm not surprised that both teams are kind of holding onto their one position right now, assuming it's not a one position timing, we'll see. Actually, you kind of want to know what Team Spirit's first ban actually was, just because we don't have it available on the screen. Ah. Tinker. It was Tinker, yeah. It was Tinker. So it showed well, up. Then. Never ah, mind, okay. I'm just looking stupid because it was black. Okay. So definitely, okay, all right. But this next pick for Team Spirit, they're really thinking about it as well. 45 seconds left for their reserve time. What do you feel like would actually fit into Team Spirit's lineup here? I like the Lifestealer idea. That, that seemed... For team I mean, Spirit? Yeah. That was what you suggested. No, I, I said for TNC. Oh, right, right, because they have, they have the Venomance yeah. around Spirit. Yeah, plus yeah, they okay. have a good vehicle with Puck as well, plus a bounty. I mean, I, I've mentioned the draw like multiple times, but at this point, I feel like I'm beating a dead horse, and if they don't pick it. Oh! Someone deserves a high five. I gotta be more confident in myself. <laughs> yeah, so, I mean, they do run the draw stat pretty frequently. Uh, they didn't go for it in game one, even though they did have the Marana mid, which is the other option that they typically run for their ranged core. Uh, they'll still probably give ILTW some ranged mid, obviously, but. It's, uh, it's a pretty intimidating push. The reason that Spirit didn't go for it in game one, I mean, obviously the Void was a pretty solid pick, but you had to deal with Clockwork and the Night Stalker if you were the Draw Ranger, and that's a lot of gap close. Whereas right now, TNC, like, yeah, this Tiny will probably get a Blink Dagger pretty soon, so will Puck, but you can protect this uh, Draw Ranger very well between the Shadow Demon and the Sand King. So draft for TNC starting to materialize here. So we've got the Bounty Hunter that's definitely going to be roaming. The Omni Knight, is this an offlane Omni Knight? Yes. So it's... Uh so position one, tiny, and uh, puck as as a mid. They might switch TNC switch things around if they feel like it. But uh, tiny does well as as a mid laner. It, it's probably going to be a range hero for team uh, team spirit. But tiny does well against even Marana. Maybe not that good because of the advantage from the draw aura. But still, we'll have to see what, what they want to go for. Is uh, Marana still in the pool? I believe Marana is still in the pool. I haven't yeah. seen her banned, unless she was banned first. Although, surprisingly, TNC ought to ban Faceless Void. Oh, wait, no, no, sorry. That was before. Yeah, so their fifth ban is still coming up. And Marana, I think, would probably be pretty high on the list. They actually okay. go for Medusa, though. All right, Medusa ban. So Marana is still definitely in the pool. If Team Spirit want to pair this up here with the Drow. Drow, Drow Marana, very strong combo. You also pair that up with the Shadow Demon. You're going to be dishing out tons of damage. But TNC finishing up with a Lion as their final support. So as you said, position one tiny, position two putt, off lane Omni Knight, and you got the support duo of the Bounty Lion here for TNC. And TA is going to finalize the draft here for Team Spirit. What are your thoughts on this? Well, there's definitely not very many things that can go through the refraction. Uh, your go-to is usually some DOTs, but Team Spirit has the DOTs with their Venomancer, so... Avalanche does uh, damage over time, right? There's like multiple ticks for Avalanche? Yeah, it, it's four overall, but with Avalanche, like every single bit is so important to make sure that you can just instantly insta-give a target. 
And TA will be vulnerable. Like I said, there's a lot of Blink Dagger carriers, so people are going to be able to close the gap. But normally, it's TA's laning phase that gets really, it, it sets the stage. Like, if someone's stacking Ancients for her, and if someone's like protecting her in the mid lane, then she's set up for success. And when you've got Drow Aura behind you, I think this TA is going to be pretty successful. All right, I want some quick predictions from both of you. Who's taking the next game? I'll say Drow Strat. I don't think they have too much against uh, against TA, plus uh, Venomancer on the offlane is going to do, do a lot. All right, good. so we've got one for the Team Spirit Train. TNC or Team Spirit Train? I'm going to stay with the Phoenix Army for right now, because... The Phoenix Train? I, I, it's, it's too good of a storyline. I can't turn that down. All right, so we've got one for Team Spirit, one for TNC. We're going to throw it over to our casters right now. Lumi and Lyrical, take it away for game two. Thank you so much, Danny. Lumi, we're here, game number one. And ladies and gents, we've got a great one for you. Again, the CIS team versus the local Southeast Asian. How you feeling? I'm feeling great. Had a good breakfast. Ooh. You didn't ask me earlier, so... Well, I mean, we had to get right into the game earlier. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's understandable. I mean, Dota's, like, second priority. My like breakfast is number one. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Well, we're going to be going into this. No shenanigans early on with the uh, souls and clockwork stuff. It's uh, TNC taking a different approach. For a second, they actually had Cuckoo that was tagged up as playing the bounty hunter. They immediately switched so that away. I was so for that, yeah. <laughs> Bounty Hunter mid lane, um, but it's going to be a little bit different this time around. Lion, not a hero that we see all that often, uh, but Bounty Hunter, a hero that you're fairly familiar with as well. Wh where do you think he's going to be looking to make stuff happen in the, this game? I mean, when you play Bounty, the, the first thing you always look at is which lane can he poke into and not exactly win the lane, but at least harass the enemy laner, maybe even force out a kill if they're low HP enough. And the way I'm seeing it is that they're going to have a very good matchup in the mid lane, right? Um, the TA was picked to counter the puck, but that's definitely very TA favored. But now seeing that, they're going to move the tiny mid and put puck in a very uh, in the safe lane. This is not exactly traditional at all, but because of the lane adjustment, I think that is the lane where Bounty could actually poke into because it's a lane matchup that the tiny uh, really enjoys as well. 1437 looking for the rune seal. He's going to get it. So game one, we saw TNC losing out all of the runes. This game, they're getting all four. That's crazy. Yeah, and going to be able to move over towards the mid next. The other thing to keep our eyes on here is that right now FNG was the one that had that uh, Sentry Ward down there earlier on. Now it's going to be, I don't even know if I see one, honestly. Um, they have one on the Venomancer, which means that there's no ward here for the TA. And even if there was, you'd still have the Bounty Hunter you could roam in. And this is looking like he can maybe actually make something happen up top, potentially. Yeah, maybe they expected to puck mid and not the tiny mid. And as a result, they didn't think that you know TA really needs help. But now seeing the lane goes. Oh, and there they go. Burrow Strike is going to connect on to both heroes up in the top lane as 1437 going to continue the aggression. And now they don't have a sentry ward to try and get any kind of harassment onto him. So 1437 will have a free time here. He does, but at the same time, I think he might be kind of uh, forced to stay on the top lane because of the Drow Aura. Another Burrow Strike going on Cuckoo, and Cuckoo needs to defensively orb out. Yeah, because of the Drow Aura damage, the Venomancer is going to be hitting really hard, and if the, the, the Bounty's not here to help out the Puck, I think Puck might suffer. Well, bottom lane. A lot of action back and forth as the Illusions are just beaten into Sam H there. This laning matchup as a whole, do you feel like it's the better of the possibilities that TNC had, or do you think that they're, they're going to struggle through this early stage? Um, specifically for the bottom lane, I think Sam H is going to be able to get a lot. He might die here if there is a very early level of Gust, but Sam H, I think this is actually one of his best heroes. In most SEA matchups, they always ban out Omni Knight versus TNC. Um, just because Sam H's Omni is so good. He, he's able to get it here, and honestly, I think he's going to be able to get a lot. I mean, not a lot of CS, but he's going to get some levels. Okay. Well, another imprisonment down there bottom, and well, a good amount of damage there onto uh -oh, Sam H. The Purification, creeps. he's in some trouble. Yeah. But it looks like he will be able to get out of there as the creeps. A little bit too much to run through. Right. Early on now, 1437 is going to make another pass in the top lane. They do have not really that much damage. It doesn't really feel like this Bounty Hunter is going to be able to accomplish all that much. Yeah, it does seem like that as well. Uh, again, he really can't go out to help mid because Team Spirit is applying so much pressure for the buff. I say that though, Tim's is rotating in. Can they actually maybe get a kill on Venomancer? That's the question. They're looking for him there. There's going to be the Gale, though, a little bit too far away to find any type of Hex or... 
uh, catch with the Earth Spike. That would have been a kill, but good yep. play from the Venomancer. Well, and now, just under three minutes in, Ivor's going to pull a Creep Wave over and keep a little bit of aggression onto him. Down bottom, yet again, Sam H is going to be pushed back just to make sure that <laughs> FNG doesn't die. I think he's blocked into the trees right now by the Lucian. <laughs> he can't go anywhere. He doesn't have any tank goes. Yeah, yeah, now he's fine. <laughs> Wow. 37 rotates around, trying to actually catch that Shadow Demon, but he's already gone. Yeah, and again, not all that much done. Maybe a chance here to do something to Sam H, but, uh, or rather on to, to Illidan, but with that Sentry Ward already down, nothing is open right here for 1437. His only option really is to try and run mid, uh, possibly. So I want to speak a little bit more about the Tiny versus TA matchup in the mid lane. Uh, because Tiny has Refraction, you can actually force kills on a TA relatively easily. But most Tiny players nowadays have been maxing Toss as a harassment method. Um, he's not going for that build this game because it's very easy to basically block the damage with uh, Refraction. So instead, Raven is going to be going for more of the, the farming build, maxing the tree grab instead. Well. Right. well, again, up top, Cuckoo going to be forced back, uses the orb. Currently level three. He's also using the phase shift to try and dodge some of the damage coming in from Venomous Gale. Um, but nonetheless, he has not had uh, a terrible time up here top. Actually, out CSing the Venomancer so far. I, I say Cuckoo is being the hero right now for TNC. Yeah. So well, jump in mid lane. They found themselves that TA. The rotation is there, and Raven going to draw first blood on his tiny. Yeah, the reason I'm saying that Cuckoo is having a ooh, bottom, that's not what I expect. Uh, okay. Yeah. And that's what it means. Sam H normally just randomly find kills on enemy cores as the off lane with Omni Knight. And if you're not paying attention, he, he'll just sneak up on you and get it. Now, 1437 going to come in again, take down that ward, and then backs out. So Illidan need to be careful here. I mean, they do have a lot of slow, a good amount of burst damage. And the only problem is Sam H doesn't have any mana right now, but the mango's still there as well. If they wanted to go for this full kill, they don't even need the purification. They just take down Illidan. Yep. FNG disrupted Sam H, but Sam H didn't even have mana for purification. Of yeah. course he had the mango. Um, but I think either way the Drow Ranger dies there. And just showing the value of having those sentry wards in lane. If you don't have that and you can't force back the bounty hunter, he can keep on bullying there yeah. uh, down bottom. And this is the second time they killed the Drow Ranger, so she's making the walk of shame back into the lane. Right now TNC is having a magnificent time in pretty much all of the lanes. Yeah, bottom oh, lane. Great disruption. Ooh, that was very close. Sam H can still pressure here now, and FNG in some trouble. They're going to bring in 1437, slow down all the heck, and <laughs> FNG, they're going to bring in the TA, maybe thinking about turning this one, or rather, excuse me, it's just Biver as he hits a stun. They try and force out again. Drow's shown up. Stun. They do manage to find another kill, but they might be able to take down more in exchange. No more mana, though, on that Sand King, and they get away. 4 0 start. TNC. Coming back strong in game number two. Yeah, 4 0 start against a Drow lineup, which technically you're supposed to be winning the laning stage, at least passively through CS and just having much more like raw damage. But as we pointed out, Puck is holding his own up top and now the Rex of the, the ganking squad, shall we say the Phoenix squad of TNC, is just running everywhere. Yeah. Getting kills. Great start, and this combination is deadly if you run into absolutely anybody. And we haven't really seen any type of turnaround. DK Phobos may be going to be the next one to go gone after, as they do have an Invis rune here. If they wanted to, they could think about tossing him pretty far away or just go for the Ava. The toss to follow soon. The Gust is there. Cuckoo trying to show up to this one. They get the tree toss, and they'll find another kill. 6-0. and oh, TNC are just rolling. Yes, they are. And don't forget, they are having the Bounty Hunter lineup. So once this bounty hits 6, and if they keep on having this kind of very active momentum playstyle, they're going to just run away with this game. Yeah, now look here. 1437 can come in. He can block the camp, too, if he wants to, making sure that they don't get the stacks up. So another little bit of economic damage done because that's something that TA definitely wants to get. And now 1437 finds ILTW in the forest. There is an ancient stack that's already there, but the rotation is coming in. Tim's is there as well as Raven. They could toss a line in if they want. Oh, they're just going to run at him. Avalanche, they throw the stick at him as well. There's going to be the toss up. They're going to take down this TA to boot. They do manage to find Sam H in the bottom lane. So one is on the board for Spirit, but they lost the TA for that. They also forced out the puck rotation, which is not that bad. Now, that means Venom on the top side will have a free lane. 
and Cuckoo might get gone. He, he needs to be careful. If they gust him, Cuckoo could be very easily killed. Yeah, one point in gust there for Illidan. But it's kind of hard to get into range. They're definitely thinking about it as they move over this direction. Two points in Burrow's strike, not that long. And yeah, it looks like Cuckoo realizes the danger. He's playing it safe. Bounty? Oh, doesn't manage to steal away that rune from the Venno, but we'll get the one up top most likely. And next couple minutes, how do you see this unfolding? Because it feels like Team Spirit are, or rather, excuse me, the TNC are kind of getting whatever they want, and there hasn't been any great answer from Spirit yet. Yeah, unfortunately for Team Spirit, I feel like their lineup really lacks a good plan B. Uh, you know, last, last game, when they were struggling in the laning stage, at least they could group up for a Chronosphere, they could fight around the Bruce split. Whereas this time around, I'm not exactly sure what is the counterplay. I think they're looking for TA's first major item, whether that's going to be a Desolator or a Blink, uh, really kind of uh, will, will tell how they want to play this mid game. God, and 1437 is just being such a pain. Like, even stealing away last hits from medium camps as he's going to Drac and trying to farm and get towards that first item that you're talking about. Nothing really right now is going the way of Team Spirit. And they're going to move through the jungle yet again. They do find the Sand King there. Maybe going to start to try a little, do a little bit of damage. They have the Coil used as well as another Shuriken is going to come out. He's silenced, trying to get out of there. But Biber almost going down. And now Cuckoo, he's out of mana. Have they gone in too deep? Wait, then never mind. The turnaround comes. And 1437 still manages to find the Sand King, drawing a lot of aggro. And well, slowed up again for the moment. He does have another invis in a one. couple of seconds. Trying to slide, but no, wasn't going to be there. I mean, that's space created, right? You traded one for one, and you drew back the TA all the way to this very unfavorable part of the map. And of course, the core got away, so TNC is still feeling very good about themselves. On nine minutes in, the big winner so far has been Raven. And last time you put him on a Razor, this is a tiny much better at trying to stay in top in terms of that farm. Currently 2,000 almost ahead of the draw range of the next highest in the game. The other factor I wanted you to pay attention to is look at all of TNC Tier 1 Tower. They are all very healthy. Against a draw lineup, you know, they're supposed to be hitting your heroes and then pushing the waves in and doing some structural damage early on. Against a Venno draw lineup especially, the fact that they're keeping all their Tier 1 very healthy is a very good sign for TNC. Yeah, and that mid tower being down right now just offers no protection for ILTW at all who wants to get into these bigger items and try and farm up to be safe. But this Bounty Hunter pick has just been a thorn in his side constantly. I mean, normally Bounty doesn't do nearly as this well until he gets level 6, which, by the way, he just bought himself the Tome of Knowledge, so he is going to get the level 6. Oh, burning through a fraction yet again, 1437. Oh. Well, he manages to get out of there. They want to pop another one of those shrines just outside of range. And Bounty does escape, so... Using a lot of energy of that TA, who's going to go now and maybe think about trying to stack up the camps again for herself. Top lane Samage did get Gale, but will pop the repel for himself and just walks away from it. Yep. And now Team Spirit realizes they need to protect this jungle, and they've spent so much money on sentries. The rest of the supports are incredibly poor. This is not going to be a Sand King that gets as early as a Blink Dagger as we saw last game. Yeah. Timzo looks like he is going to get caught by the Purge. Yep. Nice play, but Raven pops in as well. He's going to maybe bring down that Sand King in return. Looks like they do manage to get out of there. And Raven now trying to run. Again, Bounty Hunter going to be scouting out and seeing this TA here. As uh oh 1437 sending under detection. Runs away with it, but gets hit. dusted. Yep, 1437 now trying to run. He did throw out, uh, actually, no tracks, but still able to just get that movement speed to scoot out of there. And Raven now, they show up with the rest of them. There's the silent there on the Omni Knight. They're trying to chase this one now. Avalanche able to connect. A good imprisonment for the moment to force everybody away. Tiny going to be repelled and now running away. It's still a lot of damage. And they take him down with Illidan. There's two heroes tracked up but they can just look at him as they take down these ancient stacks. That's it. Yeah, that's the power of vision. This observer ward right here for Team Spear won them that fight. Um, just being able to see the rotation coming in from this left side and this right is just so powerful. I don't know what's left and right because I, I said left and I drew at right <laughs> side, but you guys know what I mean. You guys can Classic. See. Uh, 
I, I mean, you talked about it, the track coming online and how important that is. Do you think it's worth it to try and play like pickoff oriented now? Do they uh, try and get on to five and five team fights? How did TNC play this out from this point forward? I think you do play the pickoff game and their hero and items are really kind of well adjusted for that. Raven closing on, on that blink dagger, once he has that, he will be able to play it. Double dust it for 1437. He will die here. But here's the thing, right? You're at position five support. You drew out two dust. You know that there's massive sentry everywhere. So he does die, but he's getting a ton of information for the team. And he's still doing economic damage to Team Spirit. Absolutely. And now again, you've got five to eight. It's only a thousand gold lead now. And I'm wondering if this is maybe a point where uh, the Drow Ranger lineup can start to come together a little bit. Like they don't have those initiation items, but they've got a hell of a lot of damage. I think it comes down to how well they play against the Tiny. If Tiny is able to get his blink and walk around and get a bunch of track kills, then TNC is going to roll away with this game. However, if they could counterplay this Tiny, maybe kill him as he's coming in, then I, I see a very good recovery for Team Spirit in this mid game. Not only with the Tiny Blink Dagger with the burst damage, don't forget there's a lion in the game, and he's got level 6, hasn't used the finger yet. So TNC is walking around with a load of bazooka, and they're just <laughs> ready to get some money for the team. It's also worth noting that I think the next couple of fights are going to probably be a little bit more TNC favored. Uh, Sam H didn't have ulti skilled until level 11 right now. And so we saw the effects of that minus armor and how rough that can be against the Tiny, who has fairly limited armor himself. Yeah. The, the one thing I really like what Team Spirit is doing right now is they're doing an excellent job keeping up wards. Not only are they putting Observer wards, they're also putting Sentry. And as a result, they're making 1437's kind of rotation into the jungle. They're punishing him every single time. Oh, Imprisonment is here yet again, but Drow Ranger sandwiched as well. She's left all alone, and with the track, with the Finger of Death, that's going to be a kill. No more bonus damage for the rest of these heroes. Cuckoo does have Coil, but nobody to throw it onto. Is TNC going to move as five into the bottom lane? And now not only did they get the Drow uh, kill, they are also able to put up a, a very deep ward. This ward is going to be covering a lot of where Team Spirit will be in the next couple minutes, uh, farming that part of the jungle. So to me, that's a very important ward. Normally, you put it up on this hill over here, but of course, that is a very highly contested spot as well. Yeah, a limited vision sometimes better than no vision. Exactly. Yeah. That's something a Confucius man would say. <laughs> Yeah, I'm very wise, for sure. Another jump forward. Sam H just nowhere left to go. He does have Repel and everything else, but he wasn't able to get off anything at all. And now Raven trying to TP away. They've used all their disables already. Raven just TPs out. Good clutch TP out. So that's five heroes that rotate down bottom, and you've still got people farming around the rest of the map. Is that worth it for you to lose the Omni Knight there? I mean, I'm sure TNC would would be happy if you get, uh, you know, the omni Eye out as well, but I don't think they're kicking themselves with the exchange. Okay. I see this replay here just constantly <laughs> uh, thrown out all of those disables onto him at once, and there was no chance to escape from there. As 1437, we'll scout out Illidan. There's a Sentry Ward nearby, so he can't go in too far as he moves in range right now. Illidan spots him, trying to run away. They're by a shrine. And if they need to, they can shrine up, but it looks like now TNC might be aware that there is vision there. Yep. Cuckoo, top lane, taking a lot of damage here. His orbs been used. Uh, he's dead. He's just gone. Phobos doing too much. I didn't see how the, the start of the fight happened. The, he just orb in and, and misjudged. Yeah, I would assume so. They were around there around the bounty rune timing, so Phobos just having good vision as 1437. Could have good gone on there, but Raven was in the area, and well, they don't want to get too scared. And DK Phobos just having a great game for himself so far. scanning.
Radiant Tower is under attack. Radiant structures are fortified. Dyer's top tower is under attack. Radiant's bottom tower is under attack. Radiant's bottom tower has fallen. Dyer's top tower is under attack. Kills. Track kills the tier one towers. And it turns out track only gives you 40 per ally. Yeah. Instead of 50, my bad. That, that's been changed around so many times. Yeah. I mean, but I'm a scumbag bounty picker. I should know this, right? <laughs> <laughs> that's true. Oh, God. 18 minutes in, 17 kills so far. A little bit of a less breakneck pace than we saw in the last game, but still uh, very much about the battles in this one. Yeah. And I feel like that's got to favor the Bounty Hunter lineup as we go into the mid-game. It does, but I feel like Team Spirit has also made very good defensive plays. I talked about their warding multiple times now. It's been what's saving them. They're always putting Observer and Sentry together. And not only that, this Venomancer has been able to actually take down the Tier 2 top. So DK Phobos, the MVP player of Game 1, has created a ton of space for his team. And I think his play is really keeping them in the game. Like, for example, all the, all the top tower that he's taken for the team has, keeping, has been keeping his support afloat in the network department. Well, Cuckoo throws out an orb there to try and clear through the creep wave, and DK Phobos is going to back out now. And as you mentioned, just so much farm on this guy right now. Has the Hurricane Pike, a full hood, and now thinking about going towards that Agnum Scepter. His bottom lane, line pushes out the wave. We haven't really been able to see that Blink Dagger do all that much yet, but maybe in the next couple minutes it will happen. Are you talking about line Blink? Yeah. I mean, actively, he hasn't been able to set up any kills, but at the same time, from Team Spirit's perspective, you know Lion has a blink, so you can't farm as aggressively as you normally would. So I would say that the blink Lion is already like exerting pressure, even though it hasn't you know, actually put kills on the scoreboard yet. Yeah. Well, there is a blink Deso done for TA. With that timing, Team Spirit are going to decide to group up together and try and make something happen. They could think about going in for the Roche Pit, they're going to drop down a ward right now from 1437, sees that there's no traps in there. And, well, if he heads out at the wrong time, oh, this Ooh. is really unfortunate. 1437 saw the trapping spawn, so they, they, he knows he's in there, but yeah. I'm not sure what he could do about it. I don't know if they're going to be able to get here in time. There's just so much damage coming out. The Roche is already falling, and down to half HP, they're converging on the location. Like we said, a lot of Blink Daggers in the area. They've got the Coil as well. If they want to go in for this, the Avatots, it's a lot of damage. They're already dead on FNG. A good Burrow Strike through onto two. They take down the TA. Roche is still there as well. TNC are surging forward. Illidan in trouble as they fully surround this Drow Ranger. She is going to drop, and they take them all down. Team Spirit, a ton of trouble. I really wanted to say five heroes, five bounty, but 1437 wasn't actually tracking people because they just die way too fast. But they will get the biggest prize of them all. TNC will claim the Roshan, and they, do, they will give it to the Tiny. Yeah, the Tiny picks it up. I want to see that team fight one more time. Oh, we won't, because, sorry. Uh, more stuff happening up top, possibly. <laughs> yeah. Good blink away by the Sand King, though, to not get caught there. That is, again, just one of those instances where you think that you're going to be able to sneak it, but the vision that Bounty Hunter gives you made sure that that didn't happen. I think that was just really unlucky for Team Spirit. Like, Bounty happened to be at that spot, right? Um, but at the same time, that's Bounty's job, right? As yeah. a, a position 5 support, he just roams around constantly in the enemy jungle. He'll die a couple of times doing so, but he's looking to break smokes, he's looking to place deep wards, and he's looking to snipe courier. And I say 1437 has done a pretty magnificent job at, you know, all those oh. checkboxes. Smoke breaks, they find him. There's the initiation, though. Counter coming in from Tins. Avatos, not bad, but they've already lost the Sand King. And now the turnaround. Hurricane Pike Raven's in trouble. He's taking a ton of damage. He's going to end up falling. That's ages down. Just as good as it starts turn back around, TNC are going to end up losing most likely five heroes in just a matter of seconds. Wow, that was a very nicely timed Shadow Poison being thrown out by the Shadow Demon, canceling that blink on Tiny's respawn. Cuckoo is going to just look to shove the wave, but he gets caught here. Orbs on cooldown, he needs to phase. And blink out, maybe? Oh, they Oof. almost get him. Good orb away, and that's going to keep him alive. Yep. But with that kill, because they have a draw lineup, they're able to shove down the mid lane and look to dam this tier 2. This tier 2 actually is just straight up dead, right? They'll glyph it. And heroes are responding, so maybe they need to back off? I mean, it's a nope. possibility <laughs> that 1437 is there, and he tracks him up. 
it's going to be hard for them to get away. They have a blink on Puck as well. Goes forward, Bail down already. He does have an orb, but it's dangerous orbing into the middle of all that. So they make the more conservative play. So they don't want to end up giving away their lives for nothing. I think it's very vital that Sam Mage has proper positioning from this point on because I feel like he's pretty much the X factor whether TNC wins the fight or not. I feel like if he gets to cast all of his spells, repel at the right target, purification, and critically his guardian angel, uh, and of course his, his crimson guard, I, I feel like TNC should be able to win the game. Um, but in that last team fight, I think he was in the middle of the fight. We saw a couple times he gets disrupted or gusted. I, I think he needs to just stay far back and maybe start thinking about uh, investing into a blink dagger and just make sure that his positioning is always in, in tip top shape. Yeah, I mean, the Crimson Guard is great and all, but if you end up dying before you can even get it off, it doesn't yeah. really provide that much for your team. As it's Sanjin Yasha for the Tiny after the blink dagger with the drums already in hand. Level 15, gets that health talent, and top lane, Team Spirit looking to try and shove the wave a bit more as Cuckoo. Gonna do some cuckoo things. Uh, yeah. This is the way that guy plays. <laughs> He'll get out now. He picks up the Yules, so should not be dying as much. And one of the big concerns here for TNC moving into the mid and late game is that Tiny is pretty much the solo carry uh, for the team. You have a little bit of damage from the puck, you have a little bit more from the line and the Omni Knight, but Raven is really doing the heavy lifting. And if you look at the lineup for Team Spirit, they could kite him for days. Dust, Burrow, catches, but Bounty Hunter, he's got buddies. They're thinking about chasing now. Cuckoo is there as well, but with not everybody in position, it might be a bit too scary. Raven is waiting for somebody to walk up high ground. Hmm. Well, that shows right there what you're talking about, the positioning of the Omni Knight, because I think if he's not right there next to the Bounty Hunter when they go through, that's probably a kill as another catch. Onto the Omni, they decide Ooh, to turn this. There's a lot of damage here on Viber. He's just going to end up pulling if he's not careful. Omni pops the repel, runs away. They have the ulti on him. He has a regen rune, but he doesn't have enough mana to cast the Guardian Angel and is going to be able to live for a moment. They can go back in again if they want to as the Coil ends up snapping onto one. Sam H right away. He gets blown up before he can get off his ulti. One for one so far as the Gale is going to connect onto Raven and now no way to take this off. He's forced back. Looks like they will stop there, but... Scary stuff seeing your Omni get blown up like that. Cuckoo? Oh, he's fine. Maybe another way to think about the positioning slash survivability. Uh, Force Staff might just be better this game instead of Blink, simply because there is so much GOT from the Venomancer. Yeah. And speaking of Force Staff, I, I really think that TNC needs to pick up a couple more. Looks like Tim's is going to fully commit for that Aether Lens, just wanting that extra range. Okay. But I would agree, it's definitely something that's worth thinking about. And they have, should have the gold as the track kills keep coming in, but Team Spirit has now been able to build themselves a lead after two of the Tier 2 towers have been taken, and walking up high ground, uh -oh. Cuckoo in trouble, he is gone. Yeah, and I was saying before that kind of skirmish broke out is that as we get into the middle and late game, I think TNC will start to lose grasp of the map, and they won't be able to win team fights simply because Tiny will get kited. Uh, he's pretty much jumping in and looking to assassinate people. He might get one, but after that's over, you have Venomancer with a pike controlling him. You have Drowinger Frost Arrows. You have Templar Traps. You have the Shadow Demon Purge. So they have like 2001 ways to sl slow him down. Meanwhile, it looks like Tim's gonna get caught on the bottom side. He will hex one, impel another. Can he blink out? Oh, oh no, the caustic, caustic finale. It gets him done, and now, yeah, he's gonna be caught and killed, but again, buying whatever time he can, and now maybe gonna be able to take another fight here, Phobos. Tosses forward, 1437. Uh -oh. He's just he's gone into trouble. <laughs> Buddy, why'd you kill me like that? DK Phobos is the one that ends up taking the kill, but... <laughs> The wheels are coming off right now. This is, this is rough, and it's a BKB on TA. Like, how do you kill this hero now? I'm not too sure. This is looking very grim now for TNC as they're hoping to hold the high ground. And 
Inside the Sentry Ward, they get that DOT okay, onto Puck. Line. Jump forward, trying to take him. Raven able to kill off FNG already, and now the Poison Nova comes out. Is it going to be enough to kill them off? Guardian Angel is there as well. Sam H starting to burn through to this one. Needs to run away, and with the BKB wearing off, maybe there's a chance here, but Biver in the area. They find another kill. No buyback on Omni Knight. They have the rest of the heroes that are starting to respond, but the Tier 3 tower is already dead. Cuckoo wants to TP into this. They get the silence, though, and they're able to force him away. Again, nothing is coming up for TNC. Team Spear has a really nice mix of magic and physical damage, and is making it really hard for TNC to itemize uh, properly. I'm pretty sure TNC wants both Pipe and Crimson Guard. But obviously, Omni Knight only has, uh, well, he actually has both, but it, it's not enough. That Venom Master is just doing so much work in this team fight with that Aghanim Scepter. Yeah, it's really impressive. And I mean, you're not taking as much damage either because he's got the Hood of Defiance that's there also. Yep. Not to mention the right click damage from the Drow. It's just all working together in a concert, just miasma of death. And gem on Bounty Hunter, like, you're going to be able to find things, you're going to be able to get a lot of gold if you get these kills, but it is looking like TNT is running into those damage problems. Because it's so, it's so easy to itemize versus TNC. TNC, to me, is pretty much all magical, right? Yeah. So if you pick up the BKB, like you mentioned, on the a, on a, a TA, like, what are they actually going to do to him? To me, so far, the MVP for Team Spirit has to be FNG. Uh, his play on like in the actual team fight, just the disruption has been immaculate. Uh, I mean, he, he's just pressing all the right right button at the right times. And also remember when they were behind, he was the one that is laying down the detection to keep the team right. uh, afloat. He's doing so much with so little net worth because he's constantly investing in that vision to deal with the vision coming from the bounty hunter. Yep. How many times have we seen him just gotten picked off there? as they're going to try and force back again the Team Spirit lineup. But honestly, Team Spirit are going to push way faster than TNC. TNC are going to need to come and deal with this when they go up high ground. I'd like to see TNC, or Team Spirit rather, take down this try in particular. And they will do so right now because Roshan is spawning very, very soon. I think the best way for Team Spirit to win this game is to get map control for a bit, take the Aegis, and then look to you know do your standard five-man group up push with Drow. Yeah. Well, like you said, Roche is up. They do see it now with that TA trap there. But holding off for the moment, hoping to find somebody trying to push out the lanes. Doesn't look like TNC will oblige as they are definitely on the back foot here and just trying to buy time until Tiny can become that giant carry that they need him to be. Well, the thing is, Tiny is always going to be melee, right? So yeah. he is just going to get kited. I'm not exactly sure how, how they would adjust that and change that. I, I guess BKB would really help, but Roshan uh, being accomplished very fast. Yep, it goes down, and he talked about the damage that came from the Venomancer. We also do have the Poison Nova Agnums and the extra talent of plus six seconds duration. It, I, I just don't know. This <laughs> yeah. is so much damage. It really is. All right, disruption there. They're looking before they can get to the base. There's going to be the avalanche. Cuckoo's already dead. Not a bad way to start this okay. one. They take him down as well. FNG uh, in a lot of trouble now. And there's going to be the catch as well. On to the poor old Omni. Very, very low. 1437 trying to run. This is just, again, been a complete disaster. In spite of Shadow Demon being down early, they were only barely able to get the Omni out of there. And now high ground ready to be assaulted. Two heroes down. Puck has buyback. Critically, Sam H still has a Guardian Angel. They need a really good Guardian. Well, there's the Repel, saving his life for a moment from the Sand King. Off cooldown soon. There's going to be the Avatoss back in. Not bad. BKB's out for Phobos. He got the Poison Nova onto three of them. There's going to be a lot of damage. They do manage to take down the TA's Aegis. Well, they get it back up. That poison is going to take him down. Raven, nice dodge from the barrel strike. That was really close, though. And now TA jumps in. Can't quite bring down Raven as of yet. The They're poison. all very low. 1437 is going to drop. It's not even the full duration yet of that poison, though, but still going through all of these heroes. And, well, they take down the tier three tower. Another sun is there. A burrow strike on to two, but there's no follow up yet. Illidan not really doing enough. And now Raven jumps forward. They manage to take it, but the cheese is eaten by the drought. Running away yet again. Cuckoo, no more coil. He's actually starting to fall down very low. Tim's managed 
manages to find the Hex onto one. That's the Drow Ranger still being controlled. They're disabling her aura as well by standing close to her, but it's still not going to be enough. They buy back on the Omni Knight, and Team Spirit continuing just to spray forward as Tim's is going to be found in the trees. And with two down, no tiny for 60, this is probably going to be the whole freaking base. Yeah, that's already three buybacks as well. Puck, Bounty, and I do believe it was uh, the, the, the Lion buyback, and they are not winning this team fight. And there we go, 22 to 17, a 21,000 net worth lead. Going to be eclipsed very shortly as they just continue to bully out TNC. Team Spirit came here to play. They did. My goodness. I think the most impressive thing about this game and, and also the previous game is that Team Spirit started the game a little bit slow and they're just the defensive play was just so good. Able to slow down this bounty hunter. I mean, this game started with 6-0 in the favor of TNC. Definitely. And I, I don't know if that's sort of a combination of inability to capitalize on the early momentum that they had, if that's sort of the, the na nature of their drafts, but whatever the case was, it, it definitely felt like it was just at a certain point, all team spirit from that point forward. Yeah, they just play really, really, really well. Yeah. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that's going to do it for our first series, a 2-0 into the favor of Team Spirit. Uh, TNC obviously not out yet. They're still going to have to play from the lower bracket. But we're going to head back to the panel to see what they thought about all that. Thank you very much, Louis, and thank you very much, Lyrical. That's going to finish our first set of the day, TNC versus Team Spirit. Team Spirit coming out with two wins and nothing for TNC. Bit of a shocker considering how well they did during the laning phase. Yeah, it started really well for TNC. It was uh, 6 or 7 0. At one point, it was pretty much all on the shoulders of Bounty Hunter. Uh, I mean, it's a Drow Ranger. You want to pressure her at the lane as, as much as you can. Plus, you have a Shadow Demon that's super not strong lane, I would, I would dare to say. So, after that, when they grouped up, uh, also, I would uh, mention out that uh, Omni Knight was caught out of position a couple of times. Uh, it, it was not the best. Uh, Omni Knight game, you have a Gust, which is pretty easy to execute. Plus, you have a Shadow Demon as well to play against. Yeah, normally, <laughs> whenever you bring up a Drow Ranger setup uh, strategy, the most important thing that you're concerned about is push, but that silence was destroying CNC. Cuckoo's Puck could never really get phase shifts off. Every single time he initiated, immediately got turned on. Uh, Tiny, the Blink Dagger was working out well for the first few minutes of the game after he picked it up, but after that, yet again, initiation seems to be what TNC has been struggling on this entire series. And I actually wanted to ask you to now, there was a turning point here for TNC where they started the game, and I believe it went up to about 7 to 1, and then that's when Team Spirit started to catch up. What actually changed for Team Spirit to catch up? Drow Ranger became a hero. Yeah, you, need, you just need a level 6 on Drow, plus uh, Shadow Demon when he hits level 6, it changes things around as well, also sanking with some nice borrow strikes. Plus, they have a good vision game as well. Uh, a lot of sentries placed, uh, so they caught Bounty Hunter a couple of times. Uh, that's a lot of gold. Uh, also, you have traps, you have Venom Wards, so TNC needs the smoke up to actually get some kills. Yeah, and yet again, there was a distinct lack of BKBs, and whenever you have an Omni Knight on your team, you can sometimes justify it, but Omni can only repel one person, and it has a cooldown, and even through that repel, you saw how often Demonic Purge was being used to slow these targets anyway, and with the, that slow, and Venomancer slow, and Frost Arrows, there were so many ways yep. to just keep targets in damage range. Speaking yes. of Venno, DK Phobos got a, I believe, a 23-minute Agonims on a Venomancer. I, I, I mentioned it uh, during the pick phase that Venomancer is going to go insane this game with uh, Draw Aura, plus, I mean, it's a Bounty Hunter, he doesn't pressure him that much. Uh, the item build on Venom was also on point. This was kind of <laughs> this part on Tiny Why'd Tosses. you toss me, bro? <laughs> <laughs> the bounty. The, the damage, even with the pipe finished and the Crimson Guard on Omni, uh, Venomancer just deals way too much damage. Crimson Guard is, is a natural choice against the Draw Ranger strats, but uh, it was not enough. Also, I have to point out the, the Shadow Demon, some clutch disruptions, offensive and defensive ones as well. Like if you try to compare Shadow Demon's positioning and Omni Knight's, which is two most important heroes for both teams. Uh, Shadow Demon is really on top. Yeah, it may not even be so much initiation, but counter-initiation from Spirit has been consistently strong this game with the Shadow Demon, definitely. Especially when we're watching the matches as well, you know, 
being caught out, I believe that may have been the biggest problem here for TNC. Lacoste, you were saying that Omni Knight got caught out too many times. Do you think that actually cost them the game? Yeah, the bad positioning from Omni will always cost you a game. Uh, maybe a, one more defensive item in terms of uh, getting a four staff would, uh, would save him. There's so much things uh, to kite him with, especially Tiny. Tiny didn't feel like a hero. Frost Armor, Venno Slow, uh, Demonic Purge. I mean, it, it doesn't last that long, but uh, still, he can't move. The, you, you really didn't feel the influence of a Tiny. Anything else to add there, Tsunami? Yeah, status resistance felt negligible. So often you'll be seeing Tiny like escape from near-death situations, and you're like, oh man, it's that gross status resistance, it's that strength, but it doesn't really matter if Frost arrows are constantly being reapplied every uh, single second. Again, DK Phobos won death this game, so he died twice in, in a whole series, which is... Uh, well, it makes sense, considering that his GPM is 653. Well, now you won't, now, now this he's is getting closer is, is to 1,000. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> Unless you combine last game's GPM and this game's GPM, is that 1,000 GPM? Yeah, that's a quick math right there. That's how it works. Quick math. <laughs> now oh you know gosh. why Sumail wanted to go to the offline. You can't put <laughs> up those kinds of numbers mid. That doesn't happen anymore. Uh, that's, that's actually kind of true, right? Okay, so people at home that's going to be wondering what's going to be happening next. After that match, we, are, we have EG versus PG Barracks coming up next. But the players, they're not quite ready yet. We're going to give them a bit of a break to set up and do their shenanigans. But let's start talking about the next set. What do you guys think about EG versus PG Barracks? Do we know anything about PG Barracks? Uh, we know that they have a stand-in, which yes. is not a good way to start out. They were a wild card qualifier. They beat out Skyville. 36 hours ago or so, and they jet set it all the way over here, and now they're here to play against one of the best teams in the world. So I'm, I'm definitely thinking 2 OPG Barracks for sure. PG no Barracks, 20 minutes. Hey. I saw what you did there. <laughs> GG no Barracks. Uh, I, I think the crowd just went like, what? Well, clearly. <laughs> I mean, it's a wild card team that no one heard of playing against one of the most experienced teams that are super long in the scene. They, they are kind of shaky lately. Uh, they changed things around with the positionings and uh, swapped one of the players. So it's still going to be super, super underdogs against the tier one team. Now, OK, Tsunami, I have a request for you. Let's hear it. If PG Barracks can take one game, would you shave your beard? Whoa. I don't know if I'm ready for that kind of commitment. I have people that really want that beard shaved. Is that an insult? Is that people, they, they want it gone at whatever cost, or is it like a perk kind of thing? I think it's like a perk okay. to have a beard. But would you take the challenge on? PG bags just need to be EG once. I'll, I'll sh shave all my hair, not, ju not just the beard. Okay, fine. PG Barracks. Wait, if he does I'll, that, I'll take, if I'll he take does that, you. You, want, you want to shake on it? Yeah. So you're, so you're both going to shake that? Okay, so you'll shave. All of everything your hair? I have. Yeah. Everything? Okay, everything. everything. All right, so we've got Lacoste that's going to shave everything that he had. Tsunami, what are you willing to I lose? Mean, I have enough beard in my hair for this guy's entire <laughs> setup, so <laughs> it's overall a net even exchange. All right, perfect. So, challenge on, guys. Let's see if PG Barracks is going to be able to take one game off of EG. They've just got one game to go. You know, sometimes I wonder if EG, they'll be in on this and like, hey, I want to see these guys oh, shave God. too. <laughs> No, if, if I know anything, it's EG does not listen to casters or analysts at, at all, ever. <laughs> hey, who knows? You Hopefully. never know what they do in their free time, right? Never. Who knows? Um, so, speaking a little bit about PG Barracks, we don't really have too much information on them, but let's go back onto EG this time. So, we know EG, they are one of the favorites to take this tournament so far. How has their performance been with the role shift with Sumail in the offlane? They only played in the captain's draft, uh, and they didn't do too well. I mean, it's a captain's draft, uh, so you don't have all the heroes. Um, not, not sure how to feel about captain draft in yeah. general. Not, not, not about the tournament, but uh, the mode in general. Well, for a fresh role shift, it's especially difficult, because like, if you're an established offlaner, then you've got history of playing like a bunch of different heroes. And depending on which patch favors which heroes, then you're able to tweak your playstyle accordingly. But if you're just transitioning into the offlane like Sumail is, then you have to practice some heroes and just keep getting them over and over again. And then your team has to kind of build around that. Whenever you're in captain's draft, you don't have that kind of luxury. That's a good point. 
Because yeah. who knows, right? He's been streaming his offlane shenanigans as well, right? That like he has been showing some progress during right. his streams. So we'll find out in a moment. But first, we're going to head on over for a quick commercial break. But once we're back, we're going to be jumping into our second series of the day. We'll see you guys soon.